All right, you guys, thank you so much for staying this late at the Monarch Spotlight series. We have one act left, uh, and it's one of my favorites that ever comes to open mic. I'm pretty sure I never leave without hearing Maxwell songs without some tears in my eyes. And that's a very, very good thing. And Riley on bass is one of my favorite things I've ever seen. I'm not biased because I play bass. I mean that because Riley is that good. Please put your hands together for our last act of the evening, Maxwell Whitaker featuring Riley Parsons. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, as you may have heard, I'm Maxwell Whitaker. This is Riley Parsons. We're going to play some folk music and then some music that I wrote. But first, if I may issue some thanks to a few people. Uh, thank you to Katie. Thank you for taking me. Uh, Y'all have been fantastic. And uh, I don't really know that I would be up here without the two of you all. And many other people. Probably my mother and father and my grandmother and my great aunt. And my great uncle, too. Can't forget about him. I'm going to start off with a song I wrote a few years ago. And I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I go back and forth on whether I think it's any good. Uh, but I released it on an album you can find. You just look up Maxwell Whitaker, and the album's called Cosmodale, <laughs> named after the town of Cosmodale. Uh, but the song is also called Cosmodale. It's what they call the title track. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Yeah. 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 
and we practice in the parking lot of wherever we're supposed to perform. Because I live down in Radcliffe by Elizabethtown, so it's like 45 minutes car. Ground. And you don't have a car, you have a moped that you crashed. Uh, <laughs> you don't talk about that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Riley does not have a moped. <laughs> well, I guess not anymore. Um, but either way, um, I'll tell you a story. We were at the Mid City Mall once. Y'all familiar with the Mid City Mall? You know where it is? Cool spot. I heard they were tearing it down in January, and they've got one day to do it. So either they're tearing it down in February or March, or they're not tearing it down. Uh, but either way, we were practicing up there. We were going to see the new Studio Ghibli movie. And uh, I remember, yeah, what, what a very good movie, I didn't think. But we can talk about it later. I, I just didn't like it too much. <laughs> but either way, we were practicing, this gentleman comes up. Um, I don't know if you ever looked at someone and said that they looked like they had money. But boy, this guy looked like he had money. It didn't help that he was with three people getting into a Mercedes Benz. But he comes up to us and he says, I'll do my best impressions I can. Dude, is this real right now? Bro. And he's looking at his friends, he's genuinely asking, is this really happening? Because we're, we're practicing with the upright bass and the old git fiddle, and uh, he's, he says, dude, they don't have stuff like this in L.A. And he, he goes up to us, he says, I just took a bunch of mushrooms. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> And of course, he, he thinks that we're real down from out in the country types, and I don't think either of us are. I hate to say Riley grew up in northern Ohio. <laughs> but either way, um, I figure I will humor this man because I, Lord I knows I needed the ego boost at the time. And <laughs> so I say, you want to hear a tune? So we break into something along the lines of um, I'll Fly Away, yeah, I think it was. Away. We did I'll Fly Away, and uh, <laughs> midway during the song, we're singing, you know, some bright morning when the slide is over, you know. And I never really felt those lyrics until he pulled out a hundred dollar bill and stuck it in my <laughs> face. <laughs> never in my life had I felt those words more. So we, we, start, we started, I was jumping around singing, you know, uh, close, just a closer walk with thee, you know, all that, all those kind of songs. And boy, those are some good songs, but when you got a hundred dollars in your pocket going towards movie concessions, boy, those are some good songs. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we're going to go back to playing sad folk music. Um, this is a tune I wrote relatively recently, uh, in, in the last year or two. And uh, we're going to see if we can replicate the arrangement we got tonight in Riley's basement. And it's called You and Me in Circles. do 
dust was collecting on you. I know you'll be fine. We'll see. The words start to wrap around. It only Folks, Riley Parsons, how about him today? Maybe a little louder. Now, <laughs> we may have gotten to the point in the concert where you want to know if you can listen to these songs, and to that the answer is no for the most part. Um, but you can look me up on Spotify, I'm as Maxwell Whitaker, I've got some records I put out a couple of years ago, and right now we're working on something. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. Probably music. Maybe it'll be a stage play. Maybe we'll do a play. <laughs> yeah, you wait. You show up at the fucking Monarch. This is this is a scene from our new play. <laughs> or we'll... <clears throat> so true. Um, but uh, we've got another song here. This is another folk song. And I suppose I'll do a little bit of a dedication. I'll dedicate it to my father. For whom, if he had not showed me this song, I probably wouldn't be into folk music. Or music in general. And my father's hearing that, too. We play some seedy places, so find a show you can invite your father to. Shit. <laughs> I got the cues for the for the verses. This one on the ground because we were playing it. And I was like, shit. What what happens next? This is one of those songs that tells a story. Well, old Mr. Johnson had troubles on his own. He had an old yellow cat that wouldn't leave home. Tried everything he knew to get the cat to stay away. He even took him out to Canada and told him for a stay. But the cat came back the very next day. Thought he was a goner, but the cat came back because he wouldn't stay away. Well, they gave a boy a dollar, but it set the cat afloat. He took him in the river in a sack in a boat. Fishing was fine till the news got around that the boat was missing and the boy had drowned. But the cat came back the very next day. Thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. Well, they finally found a way. This cat put a fix. He put him on an orange crate on Route 66. From a 10 ton truck with a 20 ton load, scattered pieces of the orange crate all around the road. But the cat came back. The very next day, thought he was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away.
really said when playing with me. <laughs> if you're in the audience and you want an upright bass player, this one's mine! <laughs> Anyways, about that cat. Well, they gave him to a man going up in a balloon, and they told him to leave him with the man in the moon. Well, the balloon busted and back to earth and hit, and seven miles away they picked that man up dead. But the cat came back the very next day. Nobody was a goner, but the cat came back cause he wouldn't stay away. This is my favorite verse, listen close, this is a real emotional one. Well, they took him to the shop where the meat was ground, and they threw him in the hopper when the butcher was around. Blood-curling shriek in the town to meet It tasted furry for a week but the cat came back the very next day Thought he was a goner But the cat came back Cause he moved their way But the cat came back the very next day Thought he was a goner But the cat came back Cause he moved stay away Thank you very much, friend. Set. So I suppose we'll do, well, we, we, do our, we did our introductions, and we did half of our plugs, mm, we did the song about the cat, the we did the song about the cat, and I did most of the verses correctly, mm. oh, the other half of the plugs, so if you want to find me on the internet, you can look me up on the Facebook, Maxwell Whitaker, parentheses, famous musician, <laughs> and I'm not kidding there, look me up. Got about 20 followers, not to brag or anything. And if you want to find me on Instagram, then you can look me up at, oh, what is it? Oh, Maxwell Whitaker Music. Isn't that clever? You lie. You lie. If you want to find my personal Instagram, you, Riley's embarrassed of my, or, or I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed of my personal Instagram because it's called John underscore Travolta. <laughs> underscore <laughs> official <laughs> underscore. That's you. <laughs> You're on my, my like suggested list. I know. <laughs> that's that's how I got paid. Well, well, why haven't you followed? Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who it was. Well, well, now you know, so you got to follow. John Travolta. It's the real John Travolta. So, I remember when John Travolta's <laughs> wife died a few years ago, or maybe it was less than a few years ago. I got messages from um, elderly women. We were saying, John Travolta, I'm so sorry to hear of the loss of your wife. And I, f I could, I mean, I could, I could almost smell that they wanted to replace her, and that's what they thought they would get by messaging me. You know, I'm, and I've got nothing against old people. My best friend's 78 years old. He was going to come here tonight. Um, he told me the last concert he went to was to see Neil Young in 1973. So boy, we would have had some competition. <laughs> Wait, which one do you choose? Neil Young in 1973 or this? Obviously, <laughs> Obviously this. The, this place is awesome. I've never played somewhere this, uh, is ritzy the right word? But like, going from practicing in parking lots to practicing in a, a green room? Well, the walls are white, but they call it a green room. Couldn't tell you why they call it that. It's fancy up there, and y'all can't look because you're not a musician. <laughs> That's the thing. It could be the shittiest green room in the world, but it's... Our green room. <laughs> hey, my friends. I am uh, postponing the last song because I've had such a good time tonight. But uh, this is a song that everybody seems to like the most out of the ones we did. Because y'all seem to like those ones. And everybody we've played this to has liked this one more. And it's about all kinds of things. Um... Uh, it's called Too Easy, I guess. We couldn't find a name for a long time. I guess we're calling it that. Hey! I'm sorry to just draw attention to you. I met the last song of the night. Yeah, this is the last song. Was no, I met this guy today at the camera store. And we became like pals. And I was like, hey, come to the show tonight. And he did! <laughs>
Now, I've had, I've had so many empty promises in my life to have something come true. I mean, hallelujah. <laughs> And I asked him to give me a roll of film. Wow. Life is good. There are things worth living for in this world. This song is for you, Josh. And it's called Please. I can't And I hope you all like it.
as I said, the most personal verses I think I've ever wrote. And it's been a pleasure playing for you. find out till spring and they buried you in the clouds or somewhere up in Mount Washington and in the moon sometimes I out from the welcome they gave. And I'm older now. And it's just like old times. But it's too easy to read say goodbye to really say you're sorry thank you friends I've been back <laughs>